Okay, we made it to the end. Wow. If you made it this far and you didn't just skip ahead to the end just to cheat, well, then you have my sincerest respect because that was a lot of information coming very quickly. Uh, hopefully, you were able to stick with it all the way through and now you have virtually all the tools that you need to build real apps that can be sold in the Windows Store. So through the past 33 lessons, 33 lessons, we learned a lot. Let's just take a stroll down memory lane for a moment and talk about the things that we got out of this series. First and foremost, we learned about building Windows Store apps, specifically how to use APIs that gave us everything from being able to work with the internet and save things to our hard drive, retrieve information from our hard drive, working with the webcam, working with the Windows Store API. Uh, we had to understand the new lifecycle model in Windows 8 and how to respond to events that were, uh, that were raised by charms and store events and respond to uh, things that were happening on the system itself. We enabled searching and sharing and more to make our app feel like it was a first class member of the Windows 8 ecosystem. And then we learned how to make our apps more interesting with tile and notifications and toasts. We learned how to respond to changes in Windows 8 device orientation. Uh, if it's snapped or filled mode, we can handle that now uh, just by changing the layout using that visual state manager and the visual states and storyboards and all that good stuff. Uh, the same was true for enabling semantic zoom and how we were able to make that and that wasn't so intimidating after all. Uh, we integrated preferences. Remember we have the flyout panel. If somebody uses the word Callisto, we know what they're talking about. We've used it. Uh, and so we've learned about developing entire apps with C Sharp. And uh, if you were coming directly from the C Sharp Fundamental Series, then you were able to put a lot of that new language to good use uh, in building a full featured app like we did here. We learned about the new C Sharp 5.0 async features and saw how the Windows Runtime API makes working in an asynchronous fashion the standard technique, the standard method. Uh, we learned about new generic collections and their interfaces on which those collections are based. We learned about change notification and the iNotify property changed interface. And we learned more about interfaces and, and why they exist. And we've seen them now in practice and, and kind of gleaned some insights on how we might be able to use our, create our own interfaces if we're creating APIs for uh, our own apps. We learned a little bit about XML and a heck of a lot about XAML syntax. And we learned about the built-in controls and how to handle flexible layouts using the various grids and stack panels and so forth. Uh, we picked apart the Windows Store grid app template. I mean, there was nothing left. Uh, you've ever seen like, uh, I don't know, in your country if you have Thanksgiving dinner, but in, in the United States, Thanksgiving at the end, just nothing but bones and skin and stuff off the turkey. Okay, well that's what we have now with the grid app template. There's no mystery there whatsoever. We learned how to write an entire data access class and we used it to pull data from a text file. We learned about JSON, uh, the JavaScript object notation, and we used it as a lightweight means of, of retrieving data that doesn't change very often for our app. So uh, we cover so much. And I guess in closing, there are just a few things that I think you should do going forward as you contemplate building your own apps. First of all, as I started building my own Windows Store app, I started with a grid app template. This was the recommendation at the Build Conference a year ago, and honestly, the templates do so much for you right out of the box. Now, over time, I gained enough confidence to make larger and larger changes and remove parts I didn't need and integrate even more of uh, the features that we went through in this series of lessons. So uh, stick with the templates would be my recommendation. One reviewer who read the scripts that I prepared before recording this series of lessons, uh, he felt the opposite approach would be better for beginners. To start building a new app with the blank app template, which gives you, if you recall, almost nothing, and then begin to copy code from other templates on an as needed basis. He felt it was safer than deleting code that you didn't need. Well, in either case, you'll wanna understand enough to know what you can touch and what you should leave alone. The second thing I think you should really, uh, a direction you should go in is uh, to learn more about Windows Azure and how to create services where you can add business logic and save data in the cloud. Now, while there are a few local database technologies you can use, 
you could use a JSON file format for storing data like we did in this, uh, in this series, uh, assuming that data never changes or it's private data. But for allowing interaction between multiple users, like a game or some data intensive business app, uh, then you're gonna wanna leverage Azure for that. I've been working with Azure a lot lately, and on top of that, I was blown away with how easy it was to use Azure Mobile Services. I really think you owe it to yourself to check that out. A couple years ago, somebody at Microsoft said, you should uh, buy uh, LearnAzure.com because it's gonna be huge for the company. And I, I didn't really take it seriously at the time, but now I see the vision, and I see how convenient it is to work in Azure. So I really think you should push yourself in that direction. It's gonna be the future. And then third, I would encourage you to just for a moment take off your programming hat and learn more about the Windows 8 aesthetic, uh, the Windows user interface design principles and so on. We talked about it a tiny bit in this series but there's a lot more to learn. This will help you pick the right template for the given need and will help you to have a design sensibility as to how things should look and feel in a Windows Store app. And so to that end there is a great series of videos that I thoroughly enjoyed watching on Channel 9. Let me just go ahead and paste in a URL here. It's this Windows 8 user experience training. A, I think they do a great job in talking through uh, the, uh, the thought process and thinking about things from a designer as well as a developer's perspective, okay? So strongly recommend this series. And then finally, I know I said a couple things, but here I'm gonna add a bonus onto the end here. Everything you learn keeps you moving forward in your knowledge. You're gonna see ideas and technologies leveraged into new ideas and technologies often throughout your career. There's honestly almost no new fresh ideas. There are permutations and improvements and things evolve over time, but they almost always build on something before it. And so I would say invest your time in learning the concepts behind the code and eschewing just taking a cookbook or a copy and paste approach to learning how to program. The concepts will serve you well. If you merely take a copy and paste approach to coding, you'll never be able to design your own apps from scratch. You can only go as far as the examples you find on the internet or in books, all right? Okay, so now I expect you to go out and build something really cool. And if you do that, please come back here on these you know, in the common area below and report it. Send me an email. Let's make sure everybody who's watching these videos know about the apps that you're building. All right. I, I would love to check it out. Oh, yeah. And one last thing before we close out. Hey, I didn't really push it too hard, but if you would stop by my website, www.learnvisualstudio.net, I'd really appreciate it. That's kind of my day job. So, uh, and it has a lot of great resources for developers there. Okay. So I wish you the very best and please let me know if there's any way that I can help. Thank you. Mm -hmm.